Hello everyone, welcome back to Out of Spec Guide. I'm Max, you're joined by me and my colleague Jordan filming me to talk about two different vehicles that represent in many ways the best of their class. On my left hand here, your right, we're gonna see the Toyota Prius Prime, the fifth generation of the Prius. It looks a lot better. It's been upgraded a lot. You may have seen photos of this on the internet. We'll get around to the front end, but basically this is the hybrid evolved. It's a plug-in hybrid. It gets 45 miles of electric range now, and it looks a lot nicer than the old Prius. It's more powerful, more substantial battery, a lot going on here, and this might make sense for a lot of buyers. However, if you watch this channel or if you're familiar with what we do, we cover electric vehicles a lot. And when you talk about EVs for the masses, the Tesla Model 3 still has to dominate the conversation because of how darn good of a value it is, particularly this rear wheel drive LFP spec of Tesla Model 3. It's the base Tesla you can get now, the cheapest one. And in terms of price, which we'll talk about later in this video, it's actually surprisingly comparable to a Prius. Yes, you heard that right. A Tesla and a Prius are basically around the same in terms of price. So. Jordan and I are gonna go over each of these cars. We're gonna briefly drive them. We'll go over value and pricing, and we'll tell you basically where it makes sense to go with a full EV or why you might wanna consider a plug-in hybrid based off your lifestyle, who you are, how do you choose between these two cars? Because they're appealing in different ways, right? Like this is a Tesla, it's sporty, it's got that going for it, it's high tech. And yet this is like, you know, you're not your granddad's Prius. This is upgraded a lot. It's now cool. It's unique. Uh, you don't see these as often as you do Teslas now because they're so common. So there's advantages to both, but let's talk about each one. Now, the Prius may be the more exciting and newer vehicle to many of you, but we have to go over the Tesla. So this is the base rear wheel drive LFP Tesla. By the way, this video will have chapters. So if you're interested in a specific car or a section of each car, please scroll around to the chapter in that video. Anyhow, this Tesla is my colleague Ryan's Model 3. He's owned it for 10 months, put on 10,000 miles on it. And uh, Tesla really has set the benchmark for what an EV should be. They have the best charging network. Yes, it's opening up now, but Tesla has eased owner's range anxiety by making efficient long range EVs with great access to charging. But of course it is a full battery EV. So you're ideally going to want to have some kind of home charging for it. My colleague Ryan, however, does charge it on his wall outlet. We'll get into what that looks like with a plug-in hybrid like the Prius. It's possible if you don't actually drive that much, but generally having a home charging station, what they call a level two charger, installed uh, where you may have to upgrade your home's electrical panel and whatnot that's highly recommended for an EV if it's possible for you. Nonetheless, you can still live with it if you don't drive that frequently like my colleague Ryan. But this Tesla is a sedan, I think, which is important to get across. It's a really common profile. You can get this, like I said, rear wheel drive as this base model, but there also is a long range all wheel drive Tesla, at which point you're looking at a bit of an increase in price. Here, this is like a $40,000 car with this paint option. If you get the very base model three with Tesla's current pricing, it's about $38,000. You also get a federal tax incentive uh, and you may have additional state incentives. So there's a lot going in terms of the value of this car. By the way, electric driving range on this one, 270 miles, the EPA rating, and it gets surprisingly close to that. On our highway testing, I think we found it was over 260 miles, very close to the EPA range rating. It can charge up very quickly. You're comfortably gonna get uh, a full, you know, almost full recharge within 30 minutes at a supercharger. And it has an LFP battery. And what you need to know what that means is you don't have to worry about setting a charge limit or whatnot. You can charge this to 100% battery every day, all day, and not worry about about it. Uh, it's a very durable battery chemistry. It also helps make this car more affordable. That's part of how Tesla's gotten the price down since the Model 3 came out at this point, like five, six years ago. So it's the latest evolution of the Model 3. And we'll talk about the interior and the driving when we get into that section of the video. But overall, I think it's very hard to complain about the Model 3. As we go around, I mean, maybe the design isn't your favorite. There will be a refresh of this car that's already arrived in Europe and in China. It's coming to the US as well. Make some minor tweaks. I think it makes things like the rear end and the front end too look a lot nicer with updated styling. But at this point, isn't it kind of crazy that the car we're about to talk about, the Prius, has in some ways kind of sexier, better styling than a Tesla. I think it's wild. But anyhow, that's an EV. So if that range works for you, if you're comfortable getting to use superchargers and live the EV lifestyle, then it makes a lot of sense. Also, it's a high-tech car. You can share this um, 
car with your friends through the Tesla app with a phone key very easily. We'll get into the Prius, but the technology is a little bit more basic and more traditional. This Tesla has one pedal driving where it will really aggressively slow down. You may not even have to use the brake pedal. It really just changes your mindset. So we'll talk about that in driving, but basically, the Tesla is for someone who's ready to take that full step into the EV world. It's about the most accessible and friendly EV you can get, and it's finally affordable, it's durable, it's got plenty of range, it's great for lots of folks. But if it's not great for you, or if you're looking elsewhere, well, Jordan will tell you all about the Prius. So this is, again, the Toyota Prius, or Prius, as you guys overseas call them. And they do, like Max says, finally look really good. I would maybe say, yeah, I, I get more excited when I see this on the road than a Tesla because we're starting to see so many Teslas, which on one hand is a good thing. It means they're good cars. And I think everyone, that's kind of the general consensus. But some of the general consensus on Teslas too is like, well, the build quality is not always amazing. A lot of times it is. I, I feel like usually the bad press gets the most press. Um, but this is a really well-built car too. We'll of course get into the interior in a bit, but the styling is phenomenal. It is a new, much more aggressive wedge shape. The Prius has always been sort of a wedge. It's always been the lift back sedan, which I think is one thing it has over the Model 3. Of course, you can get a Model Y and stuff, but the lift back feel, which I'll show you right here actually, is fantastic. Having this capability to open the hatch and the whole thing opens, giving you a better ease of entry, more storage space, a little bit. I will say the styling has God, the, so the Toyota beeps, that's the worst thing. <laughs> but the, the styling has on one hand made this so much cooler, but on, other, on the other hand kind of compromised it just a little bit, especially with the rear headroom, which we'll talk about in a bit. But yeah, this is a plug-in hybrid. If you're not fully committed to that whole EV mindset, maybe you have friends with EVs, maybe you're considering electrification, this is an electrified car without going full battery electric. For some people, you don't have the home charging capabilities or you don't want to worry about road trips without charging stops. This is, for some people, kind of the sweet spot. Some people make the arguments that plug-in hybrids are a bad compromise, but for some people, it's the, it's the perfect compromise. You can use this fully around town. This gets up to about 40 miles of range, and uh, we will actually have another video on out-of-spec reviews. Our colleague Ryan, whose car that is, he'll be doing a lot of efficiency testing with this. A range test around town, range test with city driving, and even an MPG test to see what your MPG would be once the battery is fully depleted, which is important and not always super, you can't always find those numbers easily because they give you the MPGE readout, which means, oh, you, they assume you're gonna be charging or driving with a full battery and stuff. So 13 kilowatt hour battery, not, not a huge battery, but for an EV, especially an efficient EV, like a, or an efficient car like a Prius, you can actually go a decent amount of range on that battery. So 40 miles, that's totally decent for a lot of people's commutes, um, even myself included. If I'm going up to Boulder and back, that's 30 miles. Yeah. So I think that would probably do most of it. What do you think, Max? Yeah, I think <laughs> that that'll suit it. And also, Jordan, you're not going to be fast charging this. We can open the, uh, oh, yeah. is that the gas flap? This actually? is the level two flap. Yep. So this has level two J1772 charging, no fast charging capabilities at all. So that's why you mentioned it, right? MPG, when, once battery is depleted, that would be relevant on a road trip because you can use this on a road trip, not have any of the range or charging anxiety of an EV, but you're not going to be getting the very best MPG. That's just normal with plug-in hybrids. It's part of how they work. Around town is when they're most brilliant and you can charge that battery. You mentioned, Jordan, too, that like this is a situation where you don't really need a home charger. I think Toyota says you can charge this on a wall outlet in 10 hours, whereas the Tesla would take you several days. Yeah, level one charging, as we call that, which there's another video explaining all the charging standards and stuff. That That's doable with a plug-in hybrid most of the time because they're using smaller batteries. So if you don't have a level two charger at home, totally fine. Um, if you don't even have a garage, that's, that's another thing. But this will charge on plenty of level two public chargers. They're everywhere. Um, and that'll take about four hours, which is not super fast given the battery size. But for most people, if you're going to work or something longer, you'll get at least some of your range back, which is pretty awesome. And that's, that's a genuine use case. A lot of people looking at these have their commute in mind and they're thinking, okay, will this fit my commute? So that's one reason Ryan's gonna do some testing because 
what is the range around the city and what is the range at highway speeds? This will do up to 84 miles an hour in electric only, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's also worth mentioning the Tesla and this get similar, at least from the numbers the manufacturers claim, efficiency uh, in their electric only modes. So it's like, okay, if the 44 miles or what Toyota claims is enough for you, it's enough. But also the Tesla, if you only need to recharge it 40 miles a day, then maybe it's not too different from the Prius or the Prius, as Clarkson would say. So Jordan, <laughs> let's get into, uh, I guess, let's start the Tesla first, talk about what's unique about that, then drive the Prius and talk about that. And then let's get into the value and figure out which makes sense for folks looking at them. Okay, Jordan, I'm driving the Model 3. And I have to say, Model 3 impressions, let me just first talk about the interior, right? Tesla is like a Spartan minimal interior. Already that's the case in the existing Model 3. In the refresh, which we'll be getting anytime now in the United States, uh, they've gone even further, eliminating the turn signal stocks and the PRND selector. <laughs> it's like all on the screen They're now. solving problems that no one really knew they had. Yes, <laughs> and like if you like that aggressively minimal approach, um, then that's what Tesla does, but what we'll get into this in the Prius interior, that takes a very different approach. But here I am, right, Jordan, I've got like this minimal unobtrusive dash. The material quality I've always found in Teslas is like, okay, it's not amazing. They've improved the build quality, but this isn't, you know, it's not put together, I would say, like the legendary like Toyota build quality. Yeah, and Toyota's had a lot of experience. I mean, they were building Priuses before Tesla was even founded. So they have that going for them and building cars forever before that. But Tesla, on the other hand, is the major EV manufacturer. I mean, they have probably the most experience of all EV specific manufacturers, even though they sometimes do struggle with build quality. But this is the more affordable car. Yeah, it, which is kind of crazy to think about now. We'll get into pricing later in this video, but with the incentives, this is an oftentimes more affordable than the Prius for most people. But Jordan, I find the Tesla interiors nowadays have this greenhouse effect. I really like it. You have this combination of one, the minimal design style, two, because this is a ground up electric car and it's a pure electric car, Tesla's able to package it really smartly. So if Jordan kind of goes around the interior here, you can see there's just like lots of space. You've got the standard now panoramic glass roof that's bisected by this for structural support. Um, it's all really, I think, pretty well put together. Yeah, the Prius doesn't uh, have the glass roof in our spec right now which is kind of disappointing. I think that maybe helps with headroom in the back because the Prius headroom's not great. We'll show you later. But <laughs> yeah. this one is plenty good. Model 3 interior really is quite solid. Yeah, and let's talk about the screen and the technology, Jordan. It's really good in the Tesla. That's what they're known for. They're, they're kind of considered the technology company that does build cars. So I feel like that's almost a win in any comparison with Tesla versus et cetera, other, whether it's other EVs or gas cars, it doesn't really matter. Tesla has incredible technology. Um, one huge 15 inch screen in the middle shows you everything. Very minimalist, no driver display of any kind, which is somewhat controversial. Some people like it, some people don't. You don't even get a heads up display. Yeah, I feel like you should at least try it. Um, but it's, it's fine. I, I think the tech works really well and you get software updates done really well. People have mentioned like some companies don't really have some other some legacy companies don't have good software experiences sometimes the dealers like need to intervene and then that's a frustrating process whereas this just updates like your iphone would or or samsung <laughs> or, <laughs> or your android phone yeah yes um it's very You're right very nice uh, how the screen and the tech works here. And I'll just give an example, right? We mentioned the phone is key where Ryan was able to share the car uh, with me through the Tesla app. It synced my driver profile. So like it remembers the seat. He didn't have to get out of bed. And he this, just, yeah. yeah, he stayed in bed and just added me in the Tesla app. And now my seat and my steering wheel are synced right. across profiles. So everything about this is just so well integrated. It really is almost like that Apple experience in terms of technology. And then driving wise, it forces you into that EV mindset. So like one pedal of driving in a Tesla, you gotta use it. That's just the default. Yep, give it some beans. Car accelerates pretty quickly. This rear wheel drive base Model 3, which is most comparable to the Prius we're talking about, is uh, 0 to 60 in 5.8 seconds. So neither of these are super quick machines, but both of them are really quick enough for anyone's daily needs. To Ryan's point, anything sub like seven seconds is still quick. We've just been ruined by you know, <laughs> plaids and things like that. Uh, yes. But it's really no slouch. And I, I do love one pedal driving. Curious what you guys think in the comments because uh, some EVs choose not to do that, such as Volkswagen or Porsche and you know, the Prius doesn't have one pedal driving. Although it does have its own region braking mode, which Priuses have always had pretty much. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Uh, so we'll talk about region in the Prius, but here in the Tesla, it's always kind of standard as you lift off the pedal. Uh, there's no separate B mode. It's just the normal mode. You also have this uh, just autopilot, right? All of the kind of like driving aids that people like. In the Prius, that's more traditional with Toyota Safety Sense with adaptive cruise control. Like with this Tesla, if you so chose, you could get the full self-driving beta and have a really, you know, capable, still in beta, work in progress system <laughs> for driving around town somewhat autonomously. Exactly, yeah. But ride comfort and NVH, what do you think in this thing? Uh, it's okay. I know the new one, the new refresh of Model 3 we're supposed to get will improve on this. I find this average, you know, because it's quiet and it's EV, you maybe notice everything a little bit more. Like at higher speeds on the highway, you definitely notice some noise. And in terms of this road, which is a good like benchmark road here, you have near your home, it's bumpy and this suspension, which also improved in the new one, is currently just a little bit too stiff, I think. Yeah, go ahead and do U-turn up here. Um, so yeah, it's it's... I don't know, not great suspension, I will say. And it's weird that different Model 3s throughout the years have had slight variations with that. Kyle's even noticed that with even like sub-generations of performance Model 3. Um, how's the turning radius? Pretty it's okay. good. Yeah. Okay, yep. <laughs> the, the Prius might win there, we'll, we'll see. We'll do the same route in the Prius, of course. But NVH, like Max said, it's, it's a bit noisy at times because partially it's minimalist. They probably didn't do crazy sound deadening like you would see in maybe Mercedes. And with the lack of engine, you notice everything else more. Even the roof kind of has a little bit of that added effect. It's more of an echo chamber than something with like a carpeted roof or a soft touch roof. Um, but I would take glass roof all day. Of course, the Prius can be spec with it, but ours has the <laughs> solar, solar roof, roof, which we'll get into later. Yeah. This doesn't have solar. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Wonder one, why. One more thing we should mention uh, before closing up this section, Jordan, right? The technology is great in the Tesla. However, unlike the Prius, you don't have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Yeah, which for some people is a deal breaker. But I will say, as long as they have really good software, I'm okay with that. Of course, I love Apple CarPlay. But on the other hand, it, ironically, it doesn't get updated that much, so it really hasn't changed much over the years. Whereas Tesla's, I mean, from 2012 till now, almost like completely different. They've continually refreshed it and like redesigned it, and sometimes it's worse Which updates. Which you may not like, because if you yeah. own the car, it's like, oh, suddenly within three years, you can't recognize where everything is. However, like the built-in, let's say, Spotify app, the Apple And they Music have Apple Compass. Music now, yeah. yeah. So. Like, You've yeah. got everything you honestly need, the Bluetooth uh, integration with the phone. Okay, it's not what CarPlay or Auto, Android Auto is. It's still really good. And Tesla's built-in navigation, I think, leaves very little to be desired. Oh, it's it's one of the best in the industry. And the, the route planning to tell you where to charge. So I really do think these cars make sense to cross shop a little bit because the, the Prius is your traditional car and the Tesla is probably the easiest EV for a traditional person to get into. Um, not necessarily because of the software, because they do things differently. They don't have the driver display or the 360 camera or some of the things that legacy cars typically have, but their on-route planning is so great and it makes you think you can road trip without worrying about charging. Whereas some other cars, you have to kind of do a bit more planning and you don't always know how long you have to stop and charge. It's, it's kind of more guesswork, which yes. for us, EV nerds is kind of fun maybe, but for, for most people, they don't want to think about that. And the Tesla is a really easy EV to own without thinking about. It yeah. is an appliance. <laughs> yeah, the public charging is improving and other EVs are getting better, but Tesla still leads everyone else here. So if you are thinking of EV and you want the friendliest, most intuitive one to get into, it's Tesla, whether you're getting this three or a Model Y if you want something a bit bigger. But Jordan, let's get in the Prius and see what that's like. Sounds great. All right, Jordan, we're in the Prius. Yes, we're in the Prius. When I first got in this, I was like, wow, this feels really nice. Because I've actually owned prior Priuses or pre pre I. <laughs> Pri Prius, uh, yeah. Well, I've that. owned them and they are great. They're utilitarian. They do the job. This is the first one, though, that people are like, wow, this is really cool. And that's what I thought when I got in. And I was like, oh, okay, this is nice. But power button, that's a big thing the Tesla wins at, in my opinion. Part of its kind of technology is, yeah, it doesn't have a power button. You just get in put on the brake, that starts it up, and you just go. But it's an adjustment and comfort thing. For a lot of people, that might be an advantage. Yeah, this is a normal situation, which is fine, and I think that that works for most people. And it's just, now that I'm used to the other options, and which Volkswagen ID4 and those do as well, it's fine. But we are in EV mode right now. Actually, I'm gonna put it in just auto. So this will switch between EV and HV, or hybrid vehicle mode. Mm -hmm. um, and this will even talk about power generated. Uh, it wasn't really in the sun much, so we haven't 
ain't gained anything from this solar panel. But yeah, we're sitting below a solar roof. Which, which is, is a very high spec option on this car. <laughs> yeah. The options are a bit confusing on the Prius. Compared to the Tesla, we'll get into pricing at the end of this video, but like much more going on here, more traditional kind of legacy car maker experience, plus you've got dealers to consider. Um, let's just talk about the layout though in the console here. You switch into the EV mode. Of course, you've got your normal PR and D selector. You've got your steering wheel full of buttons for adaptive cruise control. So many buttons. Switching sources between Bluetooth and the in-car radio. I mean, you've got a lot going on here. This is not your minimalist approach like the Tesla. This even has a digital rear view mirror, which is not very high quality. I made the joke. It's kind of like a, a moving Android photo. <laughs> <laughs> we still make those jokes, even though Android photos are actually phenomenal now. But yeah, a lot more happening here. It took me a bit to get in and like figure it out, which is fine. I think that's really getting any new car. Um, but this huge screen is fantastic really nice tech. This has finally brought the Prius kind of up to Tesla level. You know, everyone else, Tesla was the first one to really have big screens. And now everyone else is taking that approach. This is an option, it's, or a standard on this highest trim Prius, but the standard lower end Priuses do have a smaller eight inch screen. And you have the driver display way up there, which actually that's fairly normal for Prius. They've always had things going on way out in the distance. Yes. So this is kind of like a, a, a mix between normal driver display that you'd see through the steering wheel. In this case, it's above it. So it's almost like a heads up display, but not on the windshield. Kind of an interesting approach. Either way you slice it, I would say that's an ergonomic upgrade over the Tesla, just having that at all. It's kind of nice being able to see your speed and those stats as well on that screen. I'll agree with you, Jordan. This is like the closest that Toyota has ever come to a Tesla infotainment. It's really responsive. It's got like Google Maps points of interest. It's good for navigation. It's still not gonna let you like multitask and do quite as many things yep. uh, like you're not going to be able to play games or watch YouTube while you're stopped with this car but I guess hey it's a plug-in hybrid so you're not going to be stopped DC fast charging it so you don't need to worry about that yeah so this has B mode so not one pedal driving but I have it in B mode now so we are regening with me off throttle but we, I still had to really jump on the brake there to get us to actually slow down so it's not quite a one pedal situation, but it is more akin to like engine braking or some of those cars that have now the B modes, which are a lot of hybrids actually. A lot of them will try to capture some of that energy back into the battery. But ride comfort wise and quiet, this is the most refined Prius by far. I would say it's a bit more comfortable and a bit quieter even than the Model 3. Than the existing Model 3. The, the refresh might kind of leapfrog this again. I find interior materials in here are decent. Yeah, this but turning circle. Wow. This this is way better than Model 3. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a benefit that's great. for a I, I do want to mention really quick while we're out here, this 360 camera is really fantastic. Tesla did decide not to do a 360 camera. So instead of this kind of view, they just have the rear view and then the, the side angle like cameras, whatever you call them, that do show your like wheels. So it's useful too. I think they arguably give you about the same information but it's a different way. This is the more quote unquote traditional way. Mm -hmm. And beyond, yeah, the Tesla, this does have ventilated seats, which is nice. But again, new Tesla will change that. So keep all that in mind. But we've still been in EV mode this whole time. I will give it a little bit of beans right here where you did with the Tesla. And we'll see what it'll do. Foot down. Ooh. So a little wheel spin there. The engine did kick on. Now you can hear engine noise. Yep. And when we do give it the beans, I think it's a 6.5 second, roughly zero to 60 in this car. So it's not, not that much slower than the Tesla. The whole like Teslas are super quick as EVs uh, thing is it's true. Even yeah. the base Tesla, this has finally kind of caught up to that. It has, and it really helps having the, the hybrid system, the electric and the gas kind of working together. Together they do make 220 horsepower, which is definitely no slouch. That's the fastest Prius they've made yet. So it's finally catching up, but the Tesla does have a, still a little bit of a gain on the power power band. Yes, and if you drove it as an EV, then it would be slower and of course right, you have the limited range compared to the Tesla. So like it has the flexibility to do both, but like you're either driving this around town as purely as an EV, you could drive it in a hybrid mode, but in a road trip, even in a hybrid mode, you're mostly going to be talking about a depleted battery because you're not going to be stopping to charge it. You're just going to be stopping at gas stations. Yep. Driver inattention detected. So I looked at the map for half a second and this uh, a ray right here tracks my vision <laughs> and tells me that I'm looking elsewhere. That can get annoying. I'm Maybe it can be turned off. I don't know. It is kind of a 
safety feature, which is cool. Um, which I guess I can mention the ADAS of sorts on this. Compared to like autopilot or even full this, stop driving in Tesla, what is it like? This is similar to autopilot, basic autopilot, where it's doing lane centering right now. It's, it's doing it as, we're, as we speak and doing a pretty good job. I tried it on the highway a lot. Um, you're able to do EV mode up to 84 miles an hour. So I was able to take like the actual highway to get home. Of course, you're kind of blowing through miles of range at that point. So not the most efficient on the highway, obviously not as much as around town, but a curve like this, uh, yep, yeah, it totally Gave take up. over. That was pretty Auto aggressive. Autopilot was would have done that and has done that. I've tested it on this exact same road. So that's, that's something to consider is uh, Tesla does have the edge, but for most driving scenarios, especially on the highway when people are actually using that, Prius, totally fine. Toyota's new kind of Toyota Safety Sense, whatever they call it, really does a good job. Yeah, Toyota Safety Sense 3.0, it's on now. Uh, it, like you said, it's a little bit more conservative than autopilot, maybe a bit more nervous in some situations, but also you don't have to worry about like phantom braking here because this car still <laughs> has your standard suite of radar and other sensors going on, whereas Tesla is just using vision, as they call it, or cameras for their driving assist. Yeah, and you can't use the Toyota Sense, the, the Toyota ADAS thing, you can't use that in B mode. So what? It, yeah, that's that's silly. <laughs> There's certain quirks about this car. You know, it's yeah. it's it's fine, and it is crazy how many Teslas we we see on the road compared to this Prius. I, there's one Prius like this that lives like near me in my neighborhood, and I see him every day, and I like. Every day I do a double take because it's just a good looking car. Yeah. So let's finally talk about once we park this, we'll quickly talk about the back seats and the cargo of each and then pricing and value. Okay, Jordan, we've got both cars exploded behind us to talk about cargo. So I'm obviously about to track both. No, <laughs> I'm not going to track them. Although our friends, uh, Paul and Todd at Video Driver are tracking a Prius Prime and you can go watch their videos. Surprisingly that, sporty. Which is kind of hilarious. But yeah, let's talk cargo space interior space for like the heads and the back seats. Um, and that's why we have both cars sitting here exploded. We'll start with the Tesla because this is the EV, the full battery electric, which means front trunk. Actually, it doesn't always mean front trunk. Some of the EVs don't opt to do this. Like the German ones don't. Germans. <laughs> but here in America, we love our front trunks. This is, I think, three-ish cubic feet of storage. Really quite usable. Actually, probably not quite enough for a typical helmet, but you can put some sort of carry-on luggage there. How's the back seat? Back seat is honestly fantastic. That's one of the best things in the Tesla. Here, sitting behind myself, I am six foot. I still have another bit of room above me because of this glass roof that extends back over my head. Some cars with a glass roof, it stops weirdly right above the passenger, which means you still hit the roof. So not great. And when you do fold the seats down the Tesla, you do get full pass through from the trunk, giving you huge amounts of storage. This is a very sizable trunk. I mean, that's an abyss. And 20 cubic feet, Tesla says. I think that may include this section. 23 cubic feet, yeah. 23. Um, yeah. And yeah, that includes the, the under floor storage, which I think is great. It's pretty deep. You can see backpacks there. You could put an EVSE charging cable there. You could fold the seats down if you have something that's like low enough to go there. But again, this being a sedan, you can't like cross over into the cabin. Yeah, so the sedan is a slight knock against it, whereas the Prius is a full lift back. But you no front trunk. <laughs> no front. This is the two liter inline four that generates 150 horsepower, 130 pound feet of torque, adding in the electric motor. Yeah, that's where you get the 220 uh, combined figure, but no storage. So it's a work of engineering art. It won't help you with cargo. Yeah. But the back seat with this, ah, let's see. Ugh. So legroom's okay. I mean, the seat is pretty far back, but it's not power, which is really lame. For a maxed out Prius, Tesla, you get power seats on both sides, no matter what. Um, and <laughs> my head is, at the, is against the ceiling. I have to like actually scrunch my neck a little bit, which is not great. I'm curious if the glass roof is better. We don't have the glass roof. This is again, the solar roof. Um, if you have the new Prius with the glass roof, let us know in the comments how the back seat uh, space is, because it's not great, but you can lower the back seats and have a bit better pass through than the Tesla would because of its lift back nature. The whole back glass lifts up, unlike the Model 3. Not quite as good storage, and you can see it's a much higher like load floor. So, that's one compromise with this. Not way less, just a little bit less, and it's configured differently. Yeah. So numbers wise, like 20 with the seats up, 26 with them down. But like Jordan was saying, it's very much a different configuration. So it depends on the shape of things you're putting in here. Yeah, but they're fine. They're both usable cars. They're both 
I'd say most people would be fine. They're not going to be SUVs type storage capacities, uh, model wise, like insanely good, especially because that is a lift back as well. But I don't know. Then it's a it bit more expensive than either one of these. But speaking of pricing, let's talk about basically what the range of these cars is, how close they are in price, and uh, how you consider value for either one. Yeah, so the Prius itself, if you want the Prime variant, starts in like the mid 30s um, because you can get Prius Prime and three different trims. This one's maxed out at about 43,000 price as tested, which, as Max mentioned earlier, is comparable to the Model 3 in its entry form. So you're kind of comparing higher in Prius with lower in Model 3, but I do think they cross compare for a lot of different ways. Used to be comparable though, but Jordan, now the MSRP of a Model 3 is like $39,000. So if you maxed out the Prius, the Prius is more expensive. More expensive and may not get all the tax credits. Yes, um, in Colorado where we live, you would get the tax credit for either one of them, the state specific tax credit because it applies to plug-in hybrids. The federal tax credit, Jordan, the Prius doesn't apply for, some plugins do, but yep. because of battery sourcing requirements, this one doesn't, whereas the Tesla does. So if you qualify for that, that's a potential $7,500 difference. Which means a lot of Tesla for the same price or less than the, the Prius. Um, if you don't opt for the Prime, the plug-in one, you still can have hybrid and then that even lets you get like all-wheel drive for much cheaper. But the Prime is really what we're looking for today and I think it is that sweet spot for some people who really want to step into electrification. So it is not super cheap, but as they've also stepped up the quality, they've stepped up the styling, I think they're stepping into kind of another pricing bracket. So. It's okay, I don't know, not, not the best value if you look at some things, but for some other things, like this is plenty luxurious for the price. Same with the Model 3. Yeah, it's kind of nice that whether you want to go plug-in hybrid or full EV, you have such like surprisingly comparable options between these two now. One last thing here that I think is so important for either car is the buying experience. This is a Toyota. You're going to be getting it through a Toyota de dealership. And historically, availability of their plug-in hybrids or their Prime models, be it a Prius Prime or a RAV4 Prime, hasn't been fantastic. Now, when I looked in our local area, dealers do have this model, but they're asking around at or slightly above MSRP. That's better than you know a year ago where RAV4 primes were going for way over MSRP, but still not ideal. The Tesla, because you buy direct from them, the price is pretty transparent and there's not that many options going on. Like Ryan here optioned a blue color, it was $1,000 and that was it. The Tesla standard comes with rear heated seats, things like that. Uh, there's no like little gimmicks like the solar roof, which you know are fun on the Prius and maybe can make it more special for you, but it also adds a lot of complexity when you're configuring these cars. Yeah, I would rather buy direct like what Tesla does for their model. Whereas the Prius, I mean, even just trying to build the Prius, it was like trying to like link me with a dealer and give my zip code and everything. It's just like, I just wanted to know the price. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Tesla does their own shenanigans. Like you go on their site <laughs> and by default, they show you the price with incentives. So, you know, I'm not saying either one of them is 100% honest, but completely different buying experiences between direct to consumer and dealer. And we cover that more in depth on other videos and other spec guide. But Jordan, any final thoughts between Prius and Model 3? It's kind of is six in one hand, half dozen the other, depending on who you're asking, because yeah, depending on what you're looking as a buyer, either one could work for most people. And I probably, now that we've been driving so many EVs, I of course do lean this direction with the Model 3, but it is really cool to see plug-in hybrids ramping up their game. You know, early plug-in hybrids had maybe 20 miles of driving, if that, whereas this is like an actual usable 40 miles of range. In theory, that's what they're claiming. We'll of course test that, Ryan will. But I mean, I had the third gen Prius back in the day and it had an EV only mode, which would let you drive about one mile, which was hilarious. Not really a plug-in hybrid, but <laughs> it could do it. Yeah. yeah. So we're getting to that point where, I'm ne yeah, like you said, never thought we'd be cross shopping Model 3 and Prius, but they actually both have a really great place in the market. I think they can exist simultaneously. And yeah, we're curious what you guys think. Let us know in the comments. We're at an inflection point right now. EV charging infrastructure, especially if Tesla is getting amazing, and yet plug-in hybrids like the Prius Prime are getting ever more compelling. So which direction are you leaning? Yeah, do let us know. Uh, thanks, Jordan, for uh, joining me in this video, and we'll see you in the next one.